And this branch is, it's not too bad, but it's enough to make me a little scared. And so I'm not gonna remove like this, this could go, right? Cause maybe then this branch gets dropped down here. But I wanna be able to make sure I move this branch and it's moved successfully before I cut like this off or even this off because if this breaks and goes really badly, we're gonna to have to go to plan B, okay? Any questions on that or thoughts on that? Or... I don't have any questions. Oh, well, I have somebody typing right now, so there should be a question coming up. All right, well, I'm just gonna keep going. So I here. have Jacob asking, why do you think it would break? Because what I'm going to do, this branch is, I don't know, maybe it's the size of my pinky. And so, I don't know, I mean, the, it's going to be fairly drastic, the amount of movement. Um, and so I'm just siding on the, I'm being cautious. Because it could break, right? Branches break okay. And I think he added the specific angle you're after, uh -huh. question mark. So I think you answered that with that. Um, say that again. Oh, the angle, that's why it might break. Yeah, I think he, he, he said, yeah, yeah, he said, you, you answered the question, you're fine. Yeah. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna do the biggest structural move with this, with this branch here, because this is gonna determine the rest of the tree, okay, and what happens. All right, so what I'm wanting to do, and so I have to think about my wiring on this. And so if we wanna take this branch here and bring this down, which is fine, but if we wanna take this branch and push all this to, to the left, sorry. If we wanna push that to the, I have to think about how, I'm, how am I gonna wire this, okay? And so if I come, if I came from the back and I was going clockwise, then what that would do is push this whole branch to the back and over, okay? And I don't wanna do that, I wanna bring it to the front. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wire this branch here and I'm gonna wire this branch here, but I'm gonna go counterclockwise because that'll take this whole, this whole piece here and it'll bring it forward and then to the left, okay? Does that make sense? So also, I'm gonna raffi it. I'm gonna put raffi on it to play it safe. And so what I'm gonna do is, since we have this branch here, which is, I'm thinking is gonna drop down, I'm gonna raffi this and raffia this together in the direction that I'm gonna put the wire, okay? Awesome, Todd, while you're doing that, I just wanna make a quick announcement again. Um, guys, feel free to go into the auction channel on our Slack and go ahead and put in how many tickets you wanna purchase for your raffle. We have uh, two items, a Juniper starter pack, given to us by Hawkeye Bonsai. Um, and then also we have a, a Deadwood pick that'll help with, for those of you who are gonna be doing our workshop coming up, um, it's a handy two to have. I see Bjorn using it all the time. So go ahead and put in your tickets there and we'll be holding a raffle afterwards. Don't forget. All right, so this is almost like wiring. Um, because what I did is I took this piece here and I ran it on this two times around so it's anchored, okay? So this is anchored. And so now I'm gonna take this, run this up and I'll finish with this and then I'll come back to, to finish that. So it's the same with wiring. When you're going to transition, right? You go, you have to, our structural wiring, you have to put it on a turn and a half, two turns, and then come back and do the other one. But you need this so it's secure, so your um, 
so your wire's not just bouncing around. So that's kind of my, I'm using that same, same idea here. Now I do have another question, Todd. Um, Andrew's asking, can you briefly explain raffia? So a little bit more than what you explained just now, uh, I guess why you would use raffia yeah, in this so, case? Yep, yeah. so raffia, ugh. so what I'm doing is what I like to, every time I pull this, I'm pulling really hard. And so what I'm doing is I'm putting compression onto the branch. And so what'll, what this does is it'll protect the branch from like tearing and splitting. Um, so by putting that compression on, it'll tear, because too, I'll be rotating it. So it'll tear some maybe this way, but it's not gonna just, it's not gonna snap. So it's compression to keep, help the branch stay together. So here, I'm gonna transition, run this into here. I have a question. Is that natural deadwood or have you done any of any work to it? So, so all of this, like these branches here were already dead. But like all this deadwood was already there. All the deadwood that's on here was already there. I haven't added any, I haven't cut any branches off. So this is all natural, all natural deadwood. Oh, that looks beautiful. Yeah. I have an, another question for you. Yeah. Uh, do you always use raffia on juniper or just for the large moves? Um, so on like all the large moves I'll use, I'll use raffia, yep. And so here I took the raffia down. I have like six to eight strands of raffia. And so all I did here is I took it down to two strands and then I'm going over. It's kind of, I know you can't see it, I'm sorry, but um, I'm taking those two strands and going over the rest. So you can see, can you see this here? I don't know if you can see that, but here's the rest of the raffia. But what I'm doing is I'm going over it, I'm gonna tie it, and then I'll cut that off so it's nice and clean. I'm also putting- We can't see it. What? By the way, we, we're not able to see it from- Yep. Um, as far as detail. Yeah. But then too, like I'm tying the knot in the back and so that just makes it clean. I'm just trying to make things clean. So that's there. I don't remember if you mentioned this earlier, but did you wet the raffia first? Yep, so I soaked the raffia. I soaked the raffia in water. And so it's wet. So like there's a couple different <clears throat> When I'm doing junipers, I always use wet raffia. When I'm doing like Douglas fir or uh, limber pine, which uh, you guys don't have, maybe you guys, maybe with white pine, but I use, um, on trees like that, I use dry raffia. And so dry raffia doesn't stretch. Wet raffia stretches, okay? And so, because with, with limber pines and Douglas fir, a lot of the time, like it goes, it goes, it goes, and then it just snaps in half. Where junipers will tear, um, Douglas fir limbers just snap. And so by using dry raffia and it not having the ability to stretch, um, then it helps hold hold the branches together if you're doing big moves. And is there a type, certain type of raffia to purchase or do you just grab it off of Amazon? I mean, some people, some people buy hula skirts and use that. Um, 
I like I used to go to Hobby Lobby and buy raffia there because they had raffia, but then I, I kind of stopped. I stopped doing that. Uh, Mirai has raffia. Or if you just go on, yeah, Amazon or eBay or whatever, there's there's a bunch of people that have have raffia. So, but you want to get like long strands, like so it's it's long and it um thick, like thicker strands. Let me tie this off and then I'll show you how thick some of these strands are. It's funny, the first time I went looking for raffia on Amazon, it was related to um, bondage. And so it was kind of hard to dig through all of that in order to find the type of raffia that I needed. I have not, not heard that one before. All right, so here's the raffia. Like some of the strands. Here's here's one. This is a this is a good one. So this is probably I don't know, maybe just under an inch, three quarters of an inch. And so, like really good kind of wide raffia is is a uh, is better to use. All right. So I'm going to use six. So this is six gauge copper. And so I'm going to go with the same direction as the raffia. And then I'm also going to cut a longer piece off than I probably need. Because when you're using this, like big wire is really, it can be tough to use. And so I want to use, I want to give myself extra so I can use it for leverage. There's dead wood, so we want to try to avoid breaking that. And so this branch here, I want to bring that down. Another question here. Does the foliage ever change on the one seed? From, yeah, so I know some Rocky Mountain junipers that I've seen, their foliage goes from, and same with Sierras, they'll go from green to more of a blue color. I've never noticed that on one seeds. They've always stayed that really nice green. I have another question here. Um, when this tree was dug up, was it upright or was it already cascading to begin with? It was kind of like this. So this was in a rock and there was a rock over top of all of this. And so there were roots like just running everywhere. So it was kind of, it was kind of like this already. Um, just kind of a little more, a little more upright. And Roland's asking, um, what kind of container do you envision for this tree? Yeah, let's get done with the design and then we can we can talk about that. Because I thought about that too. It's like, well, what is what would this go with? All right, so so the wire here is running counterclockwise. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I want to bring this down a little. So I'm going to bring it down, but I'm also going to be rotating it the whole time. So this 
this branch here will start coming uh, back this way. Ooh, scary. I, yeah. Yeah, I know. It's like there's nothing. There's nothing easy about this. OK, so that's starting to move. Let's drop this down. So two, I'm going to hold the wire here, right? Because right here, I don't know, you probably can't see it. But the wire goes underneath the branch right there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm pushing that wire. Into the branch so it doesn't come off. OK. OK. All right, so so far so good. I'm just going to run this wire out a little further. Let's see where we're at with that. All right, so this is good. So one thing, if this branch would have broken, this one here, then, then I was thinking, well, I could take this branch and I could pull this up. So we would use that. So that's why I wanted to move this branch first, okay? Oh, that's smart. Yeah. All right, and then we have a lot of other, let's move this a little, let's move that a little more. So two, there's a time when There's a time where you gotta ask yourself, are you getting greedy, right? And it's like, sometimes you can get greedy and sometimes when you're getting greedy, bad things happen. So, but I feel pretty good about this right here, okay? And where this is going, and maybe this, so then now, all right, now we have to look and see, all right, we got this branch here, we got this branch in here. This is a really, this whole part here, right? Let me get out of the way. So there are three branches growing out of one spot. And these are smaller branches in the back. So I'm gonna take this out. Okay, again, I didn't remove this first because I just wanted to see how, how this whole thing was gonna go. So let's take this branch out. Now, when you're making big bends, do you just bend a little, at for a little bit at a time or do you just try to make that bend as much as you can and then leave it alone? No, what I your try to make, I try to do the whole, the whole bend at once. Now, would you caution against like bending it and then bending it more? So as I've been taught, um, Ryan's always like, you can, you can move a branch anywhere, but you get like one shot at it, right? So like we, with him, it's like we always, I've always been taught, it's like, if I want this branch here, I want this here, I'm going to do it now, instead of doing like, oh, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, right? So at one, in one sitting, I always do it. 
Oh, okay, gotcha. Does that make sense? Yep, that makes sense. All right, so maybe that opens things up a little more. All right. Are you going to make that nub that you just cut into dead wood or? Yeah. You're going to. I know. That's what I was thinking. What I was thinking about, because it's like, well, do you make that a gin? Is it better as a gin or is it better, is it better, you know, just to, just to remove it completely? And if you're looking at it, I don't know, it's pretty straight and, and uninteresting. It's kind of like it's, yeah. Uh, now I was gonna say it kind of looks like a middle finger is flicking yeah. everybody off. Kind of cross, so it's like structurally not that great. So there, let's take that out. All right. So then we have two branches in here. This one's almost growing in the crotch. This one emerges below. So I'm going to leave the one emerging below and this one that's kind of growing out of the crotch. I'm going to take that off. And so now I'm going to run my wire onto here. Let's clean this a little better. Here, here. So now I'm just trying to run this wire out a turn and a half because then I can transition to running wire from this branch to this branch. All right, so that big piece is done. It's like some of this, what do we, how do we use this? So if we're in here, this is coming down, but we want this to be the short side, right? And so let's bring this in. And maybe we kick it ah, back out right there. Oh, I like that. And this tree has beautiful movement. Yeah, it's really, it's pretty interesting. All right, so we have this branch here. So here, we're gonna set, we'll set structure on the rest of this. Roland is asking, how much foliage reduction is safe for one seed? Yeah. Um, I mean, in theory, I bet you could take off, like with this tree, we'll take off over 50%. Um, so in the spring, this actually may push juvenile growth in the beginning, but um, let's bring this down just a touch. But two, everything, when this is all done, everything will be fanned out. So it'll, it'll uh, photosynthesize very well. So even by taking that much off, um, the, tree will, the tree will do just fine. So then some of these that are in the back, like here, if we're looking in here, but there's nothing here. So maybe, maybe it'd be good to have a little foliage peeking, peeking through in the back here. You know, maybe this too. Maybe this branch here for now, we could, you can wire back. 
So here, I'm going to wire, so next I'll wire these back branches. And so there's not really a lot to, here, let's, let's do this, we'll turn so you can kind of see, can you see that? So we have this foliage back here. Okay. So, what's that? I said, okay, we can see it. So here, I'm just going to make a hook, right? A little preformed hook. And then what I'm going to do is I'll attach that to this piece of dead wood right here. And then by using that, that's my anchor. And so now I can wire this branch in the back securely, okay? Now, is this um, tree part of your own collection? Or are you planning on, are you doing this for a client or? No, this is just, I don't know. I've always liked this tree because I've dug one seed junipers before, but they always came out of the ground. And this is the only one I've dug that came out of rock. And so, I don't know. Ah, you can't keep them all even though even though at times I'd like to. So guys, you heard it. If you wanna want this tree, make an offer. <laughs> we'll see. Todd might make an offer. All right. So we'll tuck that back here so we'll be able to see this through the front. I have someone asking, uh, what's the process for removing roots from mostly rocks? Um, so, I don't know, you can use a crowbar. That's probably the most, one of the most effective ways to get a crowbar. <clears throat> and then you just kind of pry, pry the rocks up. Make sure you get permission though, okay? For this and you can go, I know actually, uh, I don't know in Texas, but I know like in, well, where this came from, you can contact the forest service and they will, um, they can tell you where and where you cannot collect. Yeah, if, here, if you collect something um, owned by Texas, it's a $500 tree. Oh, that's how much it costs? Yeah, that's the fine. I, I had to figure that out because I have a green belt in the back and I was like, hey, can I dig up these trees? <laughs> My fiance looked up the fine fee. He was like, well, if you want a $500 tree, sure. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so in Denver, like you can get, or in Colorado, you can get permits, and I think it's about ten dollars a permit. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's twenty. Actually, I said ten. I think it's twenty. All right. So some of this, I'm just kind of pushing back out of the way. Not because it's in the way, but we have foliage here. And so I want to make room for that. Ruin is asking, um, why is it called a one seed? Because in the seed pods, there's one seed. So these are Juniperus monosperma, and then there's 
There's osteosperma also, which is a Utah juniper. So. All right. So here. All right, so that's where we're at. So next, like these are kind of secondary branches. But here, let's wire these two. These are, this is still structure. So I'm just going through and wiring all the structure first. So maybe I'll use 10. I'll use 10 for that, <laughs> sorry. How often do you go out and uh, collect trees, Todd? I used to go, I used to go every weekend when I was uh, the art director for the pet toy company that I worked for before. Uh, now I don't go as often. So, I don't know, a couple, a few times. All right, so here, when we're looking at this, this branch here is emerging pretty low. And we can wire some of this stuff out here, but it's like, would this be, would this be interesting maybe even coming up and through this piece of deadwood in here? So let me see if we can do that. I have another question. Uh, do you ever hold any tree collection excursions? No, I haven't. Um, yeah, I haven't. I know like a long time ago, several, I don't know, 20 years ago or something, Harold Sasaki and this guy Dick Melanie used to have they call them bonsai safaris. And so people would come, they would come from all over the country and then do these, these collecting trips, which, which is pretty cool. But no, I, I, uh, I, I, I haven't up to this point, so. The um, follow-up question is, would you? <laughs> um, probably not. I don't know, I would down in, in Texas. I would down there. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'm gonna use this branch as part of the back, back branch here. And so this, let's see if we can make this work to where, this branch actually comes up and, and maybe can interact with this dead wood. So let's take this down in between these two pieces here. So 
So I'll leave that. Here, here. So let's get a little movement. All right. So there's that. So now that's made room. This piece is growing up. So let's take this off. So we can start fanning this out, and maybe this actually kicks up here a little into this area, but then now we're getting a little more here as we're pushing foliage back here. Then we're also getting a little like clean this up, but I don't know, it's kind of interesting having some of the live, the living tissue going through some of that dead wood. I dig it. Yeah, it's kind of neat. Kind of neat. All right, so next let's wire these. There's some cross growth, so we can take that out, but this is good. So then too, it's like, well, where does this go, right? So I think maybe this comes. This will come up and maybe some of this longer stuff we actually tuck down into there. And then this we can kind of counter some of this on that side. So let's do that. I know I was looking at this tree for like it helped when I was cleaning it. So I was able to see because it's like there were a lot of different options for this. Yeah, if I use those, I'm going to break it. Yeah. If you guys um, have any opinions on moving a branch or, or the direction this is going, feel free to unmute your mic and discuss it. Oh, I have another question. What pests or diseases are one sees susceptible to and how do you remedy them? Right, so to be honest, I have not had any um, problems with them like from a point of view of like a fungus, but if it did get a fungus, then um, when I always, I use Mancozeb, and Mancozeb is a fungicide and I'll, I'll spray any tree that has, um, has the fungus every seven to 10 days. And so a lot of times fungus will come when maybe it's been, like it's been really wet and then all of a sudden it gets hot. Um, that's when, that's when you get fungus. Do you guys deal with fungus down there a lot? You know, I haven't since I've, put my trees out in full sun. Um, I know when, the, when it was in the front of my house and I didn't have the end of the day sun, then uh -huh. I got a lot of fungus there, but I moved it to my uh, backyard, which gets full sun. Right. And I haven't had any fungal issues just so yet. So you have to deal with borers? So I haven't had that challenge yet. A lot of these trees that I've, that I've collected, and even this one, like this branch right here, on the back side, there's borer marks. Um, and so for borers, I always spray, um, I mean, once they're in there, they're in there, but I'll spray like a bear three and one in the spring. And I'll spray that, and that seems to help, like if once the borers come out, um, 
it will kill them. I think you can also use Safari. Um, and I think that's like a, there's a systemic. And so that'll take care of borders. But yeah, all the, like that's one of the big things I have to deal with here is, is borders. Because a lot of the trees I collect from the mountains, there's borer marks in them. Or when you get here, um, the borers come out and really feed. So I, every, every spring, I really, have to, I really have to look for that. So when you collect them at first, do you put them in like a quarantine holding period and then? No. Um, okay. No, but what I do do is I put them in shade. So after I collect a tree, so that's like my post, um, my post collection, what I'll do is I will, I'll take the tree and I'll put them in shade because the roots are compromised. And then by doing that, that'll help, that'll help with, uh, with regrowing the roots because too, like where I collect a lot of trees, it's at maybe 8,000 feet and Denver's at 5280, right, a mile high. And so a lot of times, like up there, it'll get, it maybe the 80s, upper 80s, but it never hits the 90s. And Denver will get into the hundreds. And so that heat, if you don't do that, you can, trees a lot of times will burn. Like immediately they burn. So I've had to, I had to learn that the hard way too, a couple times. Um, so, all right, so we got these really long shoots and I'm just trying to see, it's like, can we use them? Maybe not all of them, but can we use part of them? So it's like if we have an apex up in here, can we use any of these shoots? Or maybe do we even take the apex? If we're here, we put an apex up in, in this area, okay? And maybe drop some of this down. So like here, and then we have like this dead wood here. So maybe this piece actually gets brought down. Down into this area, because we want to push the foliage back this way, right? Yeah. So let's see here. Well, are you sticking with the original as the original apex or did you? So, what well, the moment this has to be the apex here. Okay. That right there. Because that's at the tallest the tallest point on the tree. But now we have um, here, what's that? Yeah. Oh no, I, I just have another question, but you can finish up what you're saying and then I'll ask the question. Yeah, so we just always wanna have the apex originate on the tallest portion of the tree. So that's up here, up here. This is a nice long piece that can fill in nicely. Um, so I think that's, I think that's how we're gonna go with this and we'll see, right? This is really long. This is really long. So it's like, we can adjust that, but I'm not gonna adjust that right yet, okay? Okay, the question was, what's a neighborhood price for a tree like that sell for? Yeah, so raw.
I don't know. Rob probably, I don't know, around, I, I'm fairly cheap, but probably around like $850 to $900 just because the base is weak. If it was, if the base wasn't as weak, then it's probably, I don't know, $1,200 to $1,500, so. All right, so now okay. we start wiring, let's wire, start wiring this. This secondary. Uh, Roland's asking if you've ever run into anything that wants to eat you while collecting in the mountains. Yep. Um, so I've ran into bears um, three times. I've ran into bears three times. And once actually I was digging a tree and I heard like all these branches snapping. So I'm like, hello, hello. Same one there, and then like I looked down over this overhang, and it's this black bear, um, and so that kind of made me nervous. So I stopped. He looked at me and didn't do anything. He kept going. So I picked up all my stuff and started walking out. But it's like, well, if if the bear wanted to eat me, he probably would have. So I went back in and dug the tree, and then got out. Nice. Do you still have the tree? Uh, no, I, I sold it. I should have probably kept it for, call it the bear tree or something, but, but no, I, yeah. I, but yeah, but I have not run into, uh, like mountain lions or anything like that. I haven't run into that. And so like bears are a little skittish and they frighten easily. So, um, uh, so I felt pretty good about that. Mountain lions though, mountain lions scare me. It's like, you do not want to ever, you don't want to run into a mountain lion. Yeah, I, I went out hiking and he said like, if you run into, like they have these posters everywhere. If you run into a mountain lion, you're supposed to, make yourself bigger and be intimidating and make noise and right. throw stuff at it and all that. Yeah. Yeah, I think bears are basically dead. Or I don't know, I think you're, okay. So you're supposed to look big, same thing. You're supposed to hold your ground, but if they, we should look up, like read up on this before we say it. But um, I think with bears, you're supposed to, it, when they, if, if they're attacking, you're supposed to play dead. But. Yeah, this, don't try this at home, guys. Do research first. <laughs> or don't encounter bears without knowing. All right, there, there. All right, so let's start wiring this here. Okay. I'll get my wire here. And what size wires are you using right now? Yeah, so right now, that piece I just put on is 12. Right now I'm gonna put on 14. So on this I'll probably use 14, 16. Um, I don't think I'll use 18 on any of this. So I do have a request to move the camera lower. Oh, it's right. too high right now. What I'll do is I'll move um
I'll move the, the stand down. And somebody, someone else is asking, um, can you move it closer as well so they can see it a little better? Sure. Uh, move the camera down. Here, let's see if, does that help? Yeah, okay. All right, and that then- good to me. Let me move this in closer. Guys, type one in the chat to let us know if it's if that's good. There. Is that better? Just waiting on the responses. Okay, looks like it's good for everyone. All right, good. Yeah, so then here, when I'm wiring these paths, anything that's drawing down, I'm gonna take off, there's still, there's still some branching here, here, that's good, okay. Yeah, so then, so with junipers, what do we pot them in? Like what's our, our ratio of soil components and what do you guys, what do you guys use? If anyone wants to answer that question, you can unmute or type in chat and I'll read it for you. Um, I have one, 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 Akadama, pumice, and lava. Anyone, anyone else? Is that the final answer? Um, Sally said the same thing, Akadama, pumice, and lava. Sally, do you have a ratio? Yeah, what's the ratio? So pumice, Akadama, and lava, right? That's what I use also. But then what are the ratios? I got people typing, so I'll give you an answer in a second. Oh, they stopped typing. Um, well, I guess we're sticking to Roland's. Okay, um, everybody else put one, one, one. So it looks like no one has contradicted Roland on that. All right, so I use two one one. So two parts Akadama, one part pumice, one part lava. And so I use one 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 for pines. Um, I use two one one for junipers. And so also with junipers, because junipers have finer roots than, um, than pines do. And so what I'll do is I'll take out on junipers, I take the 16th inch out, okay? All right, so we got these here. Does anyone use um, like clay king? Clay king or Akio? Uh, is it Akio? Oh, can you use Akio? Akio. 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 Shift it. Anyone use those? No? Um, I believe some people do because I remember they, they said, uh, or I was, it was recommended for me to purchase uh well, I use that baking. too. I mean, I mean it it works well. So 
I like clay king Todd. I, I uh, get it from a uh, bonsai tonight. Seems to work pretty well so far. Which, what do you get from them? Uh, the clay king. Yeah. Yeah. I like it so far. Yeah. No, it works. So I go because, um, like I go through so much soil and I wasn't going to, I was using like the pumice lava, um, and Akadama. So, so I like sift, um, sift so much soil. So always like do that too. Make sure you're sifting. Make sure you always sift your soil, right? Even if, even if it's pre-sifted? Yep. I have a yeah. um, Ruin mentioned he uses uh, pine bark as well, sifted. Mm -hmm. So I used to use pine bark. I just, I, I don't anymore. And David posted that he uses oil dry and pine bark. I don't know what oil DRI is. It's, uh, yeah. I think that's, that's like for stables. Oh, uh, okay. That what that is, I think. And um, okay, uh, Jacob asked if there's a decent Akadama uh, substitute. Not that I know of. Okay. Not that I know of. And uh, I can't ever say that word, D Earth. Um, it's like the, the cat litter, the kitty litter stuff. Is it diatomaceous? Yeah, there you go. Oh, diatomaceous. Well, that's not cat litter. That's a whole nother thing. <clears throat> I know, like, I've never used it because I know, like, um, I don't know. I've just been able to, <clears throat> to still get Akadama, but I know, <clears throat> like, Ryan, um, who I study with, has is um like try he's used that before i don't think it's still the same it's not as good as akadama but um he's i don't know he's he's looked in that i know several people have but i think it like at this point um for cat eye exchange and everything um akadama is is the best so i think with the kitty yeah, litter they were referring to um calcined clay Oh, okay. And somebody else posted TT rocks. I don't know. I don't know what that is. Hey, Jacob, you feel free to explain what TT rocks is. Oh, never mind. It was a joke. <laughs> what, are, what is it? I think I think the joke is that it's kitty litter, so it soaks up like oh. pee and stuff. <laughs> nice, Jacob. I uh, got it. <laughs> yeah. So now here, I'm just wiring. I'm trying. I'm going to start laying these pads out. It's like we'll see what this first pad feels like. the length and then we'll start we'll start going from there and then it's the rest is just it, it is it's, it's more fine wiring but here like too at the end with with, with junipers i always it's like get the tips perky right so always tip the, the tips of your junipers up I don't know. I really feel like this is a Jennifer Price tree because <laughs> it has so much movement in it. Uh, I don't know. What, what does that mean? Oh, just like she she likes trees with a lot of movement and that smooth ballerina look to it. Yeah, yeah it's pretty interesting. It's, it's pretty interesting. 
All right, so let's take a look here. Here, here. So there's our, our first pad. Down here, maybe this needs to go in just a touch more. So now we're getting to a point where this is the, are you getting greedy? But that feels good. And then right there. Okay. So here, anything growing down will take off. Now let's just clean some of this up a little. Okay, so there's our, I don't know if you can see that too well. Here's like a first little pad right there, okay? Right in here. So now we have this branch, which emerges like further up than here. So what further up than here? Further up on this branch. So I'm going to see if we can use that. kind of fill in maybe a little space here. So I'm just gonna take it up and then bring it back down. We have someone asking as a somewhat beginner going into the third year, where can they find where they where can they learn more about how to shape and design trees? Sure. Um, do you um, have any good resources? I mean, so I mean, depending on what you want to do, um, like I'm having I'm having classes at my place here in Denver, and so a lot of that is is all collected material. Um, but also like online, uh, Mirai Live is a really good, a really good resource. Um, Mirai Live is, is probably like one of the, it's, it's probably the best. Um, but then too, like I know Bjorn's starting his. Um, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of different avenues. I don't know, I geek out and I go like on YouTube a lot and just start watching YouTube videos. There's a lot of information out there. I think what I would say is you have to find someone that really um, like kind of connects with you and, and like what their design is and how they approach trees and then, and then go with that. So Ryan was your teacher, right? You went to Ryan school and graduated from I mean, I never, program? I never graduated. I just, I've been going to see him for, like this year was uh, like the eighth year. So I just, I just keep going. I just keep going to Ryan's and then it's like studying with him. And then like sometimes like Ryan and I are close also. And so what we'll do is like when it, uh, his team is kind of off for Christmas or something like that. We didn't do it this year, but we've done it before. And then like, I'll go out there and I'll stay, I'll stay a week or so and me and him will just work on trees together. Now for your classes that you offer, is that like a part of like a, a school program or is it, is the workshops like one of? I'm, so there's two different ways that I've, I've set it up. Um, so in March, in March and April, because in Colorado, we're a little later and because of my travel schedule, um, that's when I'm doing repotting workshops. And now here it's still okay to repot at that time of year. Um, and so 
like some people have signed up for like the repotting and then so that was what March, April, and then like June after things grow and then September. So there's times there's there's opportunities to come more than once or it's also some people just can't can't do that with work. Um, and so with something like that, then you could just come, you know, you could you could come just one time. So that's kind of how I've how I've set it up. I noticed that you filled in for Ryan a few times. Are you like his designated like fill in person if Ryan can't make a workshop or um, a, a planned event? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'm his, I don't know if I'm his designated person or not, but um, seeing that I've studied there for so long, you know, he knows that I know, you know, like his, the way he approaches things. And so that's kind of, I think, where, where he uses me, you know, why he was, why he's able to use me. A question from Roland. How long does your collected tree stay in their post collection containers? Yeah. And when is it a time to put it into a bonsai container? Yep. Yeah. So if I keep them here, like I won't sell them until I've had them for a year. Um, but then I, like I wouldn't put them into a bonsai container for at least another year, at least. And to do that, they'd have to like be growing really well. So at least two years before, before I start thinking about um, putting them in bonsai containers. But two. So is it just a, what? oh, go ahead. No. I was gonna say, is it just the first year that you do the heat bed during the winter? I, yeah, so any tree, I use heat beds when I have a tree that is, um, maybe when I collected it, it was a tough collect, so the roots are a little compromised. And so in Denver, like today was beautiful. Um, but I mean, we get down into the zeros and negatives and, you know, the winters can be pretty harsh. So trees I put on heat beds are either trees that had a, a rough, maybe a rough collection, trees that I dug either like late in the year or over the winter, or um, or trees that are just really good that I just want to I want a baby. But yeah, heat is heat's heat's pretty interesting, um, and it works really well. But too, like I get bills, or not bills, but I get Excel Energy sending me messages all the time saying, you use, you're using 50% more, more energy than your efficient neighbors. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's probably about right. <laughs> so it's not, it's not cheap, but if you're going to collect a tree, then, you know. I just, I, you, you need to just take care of it and at all, whatever that means, so. I have another question. Um, have you had an ash juniper come through your nursery? Uh, no, I have not. I've never, I've never collected them. I've never, um, I've worked on them. And so actually tomorrow, tomorrow I'm flying to Houston um, and so when I'm out there, I know I'll be working on, on ash juniper, some ash juniper. So, but yeah, so an ash juniper in Denver, like I would really have to protect this from, you know, overwintering because they're just not as, they're just not as cold hardy as, um, as our native junipers. 
All right, so here I'm sucking this in. This feels long, right? And we don't want this over top of that branch below it. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna cut this here because I have this here, right? This little, that little bud right there. And so whenever I'm doing that, I'm always trying to hide your cuts, right? Because you can pull this out and that can, that can hide that area. So then too, when I'm looking at this here, there's a branch here that we kept. And I don't know if we need this now. All right, so next we're gonna wire, let's wire this up, okay? And so we have two, two little branches here. We have this one here, and then we have this one, right? And this is longer, this is longer than, than this one right in front of it, but it also is really long. It's long and it's not emerging at as quite a good an angle as this, but this is, it's much better. This is growing a little, but not too much. So here, I'm gonna take, no, I gotta go with that. This is the better angle for the branch. So that's, this is what we're gonna use. We'll use that. I have Jacob asking, do you prefer to stay within the conifer family? And if there are any, other species you'd like to work on, uh, what are they? Sure. So I have maples. I like working on maples. I also like azaleas. Um, and then I have, I have azaleas. I have Japanese maple. I have hammer maple. Um, and then I have like for the kind of broadleaf evergreens, I have, I have holly and I have olive. Um, and then, yeah, like azaleas. I like azaleas. Who doesn't like azaleas? Because they're so beautiful when they flower. But I have azaleas. I have azaleas and rhododendrons. So that's kind of, but the majority of the work that I do um, is on conifers and conifers native to Colorado or to the, not necessarily Colorado, but. Um, North America. Has anyone down there ever collected one seed junipers? Not seen any typing. No, no one's collected one seed. What about pinions? I think maybe Brandon is Brandon in the chat. Oh yeah, he is. Feel free to speak up, uh, unmute your mic, and join the conversation. Yeah. Anyway, so pinions are really good too. And pinions. So that was kind of when we were, when I was thinking about what tree to work on and talk about pinions was another tree I, I, I thought about. Oh, I noticed somebody posted a question in the Zoom chat. What size do you sift to for soil? Um, it depends. It depends on the species of tree. Okay. So if it's pines and um, well, actually, if it's just pines, pines, I take out the 16th inch. And so I say that, right? Um, because 
but Denver's really dry. And so where Ryan is in, in Oregon, he has to deal with, I mean, it rains all winter long. And so for him, he takes out the 16th of an inch, but actually here, I've left 16th of an inch in in Ponderosas. Limbers, I always pulled it out, but all my other pines, I've left 16th inch in, and because it's so hot and dry here, um, I think that's okay. But then for, Like spruces are like a three, three, one, one, but I leave 16th in, right? Junipers, I, I leave 16th in. Um, and so for, I guess pretty much everything. Here, everything I, I leave 16th in, but I was taught that with pines, you take out the 16th of an inch. But then for like an aeration layer, I use like quarter inch, quarter inch to maybe, maybe three eighths to a quarter inch. But then everything for the body is like 16th inch up to three eighths of an inch. Now, earlier you mentioned the base is not strong. What did you mean by the base is not strong? For this because tree. it's very, um, like here, if we're looking right here, it's just like, this is the thickest part, right? Right there. And here the base is weak because it's really thin. I Does that answer, that answer your question? Yep, it does. Do you think it's not? Um, no, you... I, I just wanted to know what you meant by it. <laughs> All right. So here, let's look at this. I'm not super happy. Super happy with that. And maybe because it's just kind of how it's just kind of meandering there. So actually, let's try this. Let's take this down. And then we're going to take this up. And then out. Let's see if that helps. Yeah, that feels better. Yeah, we can see it better now. Yeah, so it's like, I'm just trying to make room, right? Make room for that. All right, that, that, let's come back on this side. So this is that branch where we took it and brought it up through this dead wood right here. Let's see if we can get that in a little tighter. It's like, I don't think we want this too long. I 
Andrew said he keeps up with your work on Instagram and what stands out to him is your ability to craft remarkable foliage pads. Do you have uh, one or two concepts that can guide you, guide you in their design? Yeah, so I mean, part of it and probably, probably a big part is just like a lot of it is the cleaning process. And so like the better you can clean, uh, the cleaner the pads are. But two, it's like when you're looking at, you're looking at making a branch and you're seeing what, what foliage is there. I don't know, it's all, it's, it's a puzzle, you know? And it's like, all right, where do these branches go? Like, how does this need to fan out? And a lot of times, like I'll sit there and it's like, you kind of have to play with it. Cause it's like, okay, move this here, do this, do this. Well, that didn't work. What if we move this here, you know? And so that was like kind of one thing I first noticed when even with Ryan and studying with Ryan, it's like, there are times where he's like, I just, I just need to play here. And so he would just start like moving the branches around and adjusting foliage. And it's like, nope, that's not working. And then he'd go and, and do something else. So it's just, I don't know. It's like I said, it's a puzzle. It's a puzzle. It's like this whole tree is a puzzle. Um, and so just kind of being able and knowing like your puzzle pieces aren't always going to fit correctly. And so then you have to get another puzzle piece, you know, and just, I don't know. It's like, I'm somewhat of a, like a perfectionist. And so like also what that means sometimes is that like you have a little bit of a fear of failure. And so, but that's all part, like that's all part of the process. And that's when you grow is when you, um, is when you fail and then you're able to realize that and then come back and, and figure out what you did wrong and how can you do it differently. So I don't know, maybe I got a little too uh, philosophical, but it's, um, but yeah, I guess the big thing is just to clean and then be able to um, just know it's like, it's not gonna be be right every time and, and that you just have to, you sometimes have to play a little and, and try to figure out how to make it correct. And too, it's practice, you know, it's, it's like you just, you wire and you wire and wire and design and design and design and, and um, I don't know, then after a while you start, you start just seeing things, you know, and you know, you know, like how pads will lay out because you've seen, you've somewhat seen like what this branch structure looks like and, and how these pieces of foliage are sitting. It's like, oh, I've seen that before. I'm able to, I know, I know what this can turn into, so. Andrew says he's into philosophy and uh, his question is, what is bonsai fail failure in your opinion? Mm -hmm. I mean, so to me, bonsai failure is when um, like maybe I take a piece of like raw stock and I turn it into something that's maybe too like maybe too tame. Um, or it's like, okay, I set this structure. I moved like this branch over here. Oh, but I've, but that's wrong. There's, there's like, there's a better, there's a better choice. There's a better thing to do, you know? And it's like, okay, I, like that was a mistake, right? I don't think this is on this street, but I'm just saying that that could be one of those where it's like, all right, that's a mistake. So then what's, what's a better, you know, but for every failure, there's, there's that same, possibility to succeed. So just because like, okay, I set the structure wrong, that doesn't mean that's where it has to stay. I can adjust it. 
you know? So I think like really your bonsai failure is to probably one, not push yourself to get better and, and, and what, um, and your abilities. I think that would be a failure to just, and to maybe just be happy with, with mediocre. So, and I'll, I, so I have a story about that. I was at Ryan's studying. I have a lot of Ryan stories. Um, and I was there studying and he gave me a tree and he's like, you know, what's, what's the best angle? What's the best design? What's the best everything? And it, like he had already repotted it once. And it's like, I looked at it. It's like, okay, the lines are good. You know, the tilt is good. Everything's good. And so he comes back, he goes, so what's the new angle? And I go, well, because he gives us like this checklist, you know, it's like best line, look at horizontal, verticals, none of that. And so I go, oh, this is, this looks good just as it is. And I was like, what do you think? And he goes, I think you're, oh, what do you say? I think you're settling for mediocre. That's what he told me. And it's like, oh, that, that, that one hurt, you know, but it's like, yeah, that's, that was a failure. I, I, I was settling for mediocre. Yeah. It, somebody posted, can't there be beauty and failure? No, there, it, and that's what I'm saying. It's like there is beauty and failure. Because that's where you're, where the learning comes from, you know? It's like, all right, before, before tonight's demo, I was nervous as could be, right? And it's like, I was pacing and I was anxious and that, because it's like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna fail. And so it's like, I worried about that, you know? But it's like, well, two, failure is staying in your comfort zone. It's like, I don't know, some people like the public speak, right? And I don't get it, I don't like it, right? And stuff like this makes me nervous. But, but if I decided not to do something like this because it's out of my comfort zone, then, you know, then that's a failure. So I think that too, it's like getting out of, get out of your comfort zone. Anyways. All right, so there we are. There's some bottom branches, right? Right here. Uh, let's trim some of this back a little. Clean this off. So we got this, this. So when we look here, this is. This is out actually further than this lowest branch at this point. And it's like, I'm, I'm okay with that. Cause actually this may be, maybe this comes in a little and this sits here, right? Then we got that, all right, let's come back up into here. Hey everyone, just a friendly reminder that we do have a few uh, raffle items in the auctions channel. Uh, take a look if you're feeling lucky. Thanks guys. Thanks Roland. Just remember guys, the raffle monies go to like providing you guys good content out there. So feel free to buy tickets. How are we doing on time? Looks like we're going to go over. It's uh, 8.52 now. Okay. 
so after this, um, Todd will give you some time to like ask them additional questions. Yeah, so we can do that. And then two, my flight, so I'll get up tomorrow because we may not get through all this. Um, but I'll get up tomorrow and I'll go as far as I can and try to finish this before I fly to Houston. And then I'll take a picture and I'll, I'll send it to you so you can see. Awesome. If anyone has any other questions, feel free to post them or you can unmute your mic and ask them either way works. Hey Todd, after you're done with this work on this one seed, um, will this go in a greenhouse for, for like protection from um, freezing temperatures yeah. and stuff? Yep, so this will go in my greenhouse, which it won't, um, I'll adjust that, or actually it may stay in here. Um, it may stay in here in the studio, and then what I'll do is like every day I'll open, I'll open the garage um, door because it gets a lot of light in here. And so I'll put it next to the garage door. Um, but yeah, so after work like this, you don't want to let the tree freeze. So that's, um, that's the big thing because we, we did a lot of bending and a lot of stuff on this. And so, and we re removed foliage. And so we need, we need to protect this. If someone did, didn't have a greenhouse, would it be acceptable to uh, leave it out, but then just bring it inside when, when we know we're gonna get below freezing? Um, leave it out, but bring it inside. Yeah, you could probably do that. You just don't want it to freeze. And also you don't want it to, um, you wanna watch, Um, like winds. I don't know how, do you guys get a lot of winds there? Yeah, we can, we can get some pretty crazy winds here sometimes. Yeah. Desiccation yeah. is one of the worst things, right? And so that's like a lot of time these trees where they come from, it's like the reason their branches are dead and things are dead because like up in Wyoming, so a lot of, um, like the junipers up in Wyoming, they're just like beat to death by wind and ice and all that. And so, so yeah, so that's, that's, that's one of the things too, wind. Wind, and that's another thing, like after collection, I always try to put, try to put the trees in an area that has good wind protection. Um, I have Andrew asking, do you find yourself working faster in a demo like this, or is it this your typical speed? No, this is, well, it depends. Um, it's like in demos, you have to work a little quicker. Like when I'm, in, when I'm home and I'm like experimenting, experimenting, then it takes a little longer, you know, because I'm trying more things, but a lot of times, um, I don't know, when you're working for people, you know, and it's like they have a lot of work, you just have to, you just kind of have to buckle down, you know, and just, and just whip, you know, just whip the work out. But I don't know, when I'm home, I tend to work, I tend to work slower than I do um, when I'm working for people or doing a demo or something like that. Um, I have someone else asking, what are your best tips for beginners? Um, so like if you want to get something, like I would even like go, so people, people here, right? I have beginners come here and they're like, well, what's a good what's a good starter tree for, for a beginner? It's like, well, what's like really hardy in your area? So out here, 
if someone wanted to buy something and, you, and they lived in Denver, like a blue spruce is really tough. Um, Ponderosa pines are really tough. And, and some species like that. But like too, it's like maybe go to home, go to Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever and just get, get some type of garden material, you know, nursery stock. Um, and then you can, you can practice on that. Another question is what type of pot and what angle will you pot the tree? Sure, so <clears throat> the angle, the angle will be pretty close to this. Um, the pot, I think, like some type of, like maybe semi-cascade, because this drops down this cascade, semi-cascade, but I think too, like something maybe, you know, like a lotus, like a tall lotus or something that has kind of like the flowers, you know, like, like lipped and, and um, kind of rounded, rounded top. That's kind of, that's what I'm thinking for something like this. I don't know, what do you guys think? What, do, what would you guys put it in? Oh, one thing too I thought about, I don't know how many of you know like Jan Kulik and he has those vertical stones. I thought like uh, for a vertical stone, but you would take the tree instead of being like this, you dump it like that and attach it to the stone and just have it kind of hanging down off of it. I think that would be pretty interesting. Oh, that definitely, that's my vote. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty cool. I was gonna say too, like when you're doing demos, like junipers are always, they just, junipers in general, just they take a lot of time, you know? And so, I don't know, like a lot of times I'll try to avoid doing a juniper, but I knew, I don't know, I just knew like this type of, this type of juniper did really well down there. And so that's why I was, I thought, you know, and too, there's not, there's not a lot of people that have one seed junipers, you know, it's like I have them, uh, Bjorn has some crazy ones. Um, so it's like, it's a species, same with, I don't know, same with like pinions, it, it doesn't seem like a lot of people have them. And so then when you get a chance to I don't know, get a chance to do a demo and talk about, talk about them, that's always fun. I'm curious, uh, guys, do you guys know if pinion pines grow here well? Yeah, does anyone there have them? I wanna say Brandon has one. I was gonna say they should do just fine there. That is my guess. Because you Looks do- like get, Joey says he has one. Yeah, because you do get cold, but it's not like the really severe cold that we have here. Um, and I mean, they grow like the ones that I get, they grow in Colorado, but I've been getting them in New Mexico and it's, they, it's the desert, like they're growing in the desert, so. I don't know, I would think they would do pretty well there. Oh yeah, we should test that out. Yeah, they're pretty cool. If they grow in a desert, then you don't have to water them as much, right? Well, actually, so that's not true. So what I found with, 
like pinion pines, one seeds, like any of the desert species, once that taproot is cut, they take water up like crazy. So last year, so I had a tree stolen last year and it was a pinion pine. Um, and actually that tree, when everything else in the spring, when it was growing, like the ponderosas, the junipers, like all that, even spruces, I was watering at times twice a day. The pinion, I was watering three times a day because it just, granted, it was in a small pot, but that thing just took up so much water. So I know you think, oh, the desert species, they don't, they grow in the desert, so they, you know, you don't have to water them as much. But once that tap root is cut and those fine feeder roots, because in the desert, right, it, the, those trees rely on those tap roots a lot, you know, because they have to search for, search for water and search so far for it. But then we get it into a bonsai cultivation, you know, and it's like they're getting, they're eating, you know, bonbons on the couch and then they just, uh, they just explode and, and take, take lots of water, so. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's interesting. And it looks like Joey said he, he had his for five years now. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, like I say, they should, they should do really well there. Is it there like a three year mark, Todd, to where like you'll know if, if it's not going to do well in your climate, like a tree that you're experimenting with? Uh, yeah. So actually, Brandon has. Uh, what does he have? Spruce. I don't know if he still has a ponderosa or not, but that was actually part of what we were doing was it's like, well, let's just see if let's just see if it would even live there. And so, yeah, within within three years, you'll know. You'll know if, if, if the tree will do do well in that climate. Thanks, Joey. We, we know we can have pinions here now. Not to be a stickler. And, uh, oh. But oh, go ahead. I was just going to say it's it's traditionally pronounced pinion. Yeah, well, that is correct. That is correct. Pinion. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. No, I have like, I have clients, I have a client in New Mexico and that's how, how he always says it. And then my wife lives, or my wife lives, she lives here. Her father lives a little south of here in, in Colorado and uh, they have pinions on their property. And he always says that too, the, the pinion, so yeah. Uh, Brandon says the spruce and the pondo is still strong. Oh, good. Yeah, so, so maybe- How many years? I think this would be, I think he came in 2017. I think 2017 is when he came. Oh, nice. Oh, he said September, 2018. Oh, September, 2018. All right. So yeah, so this year we should know. But it's like, if you're getting cold weather then you know, and snow, that should, uh, that, that should happens be... only every 30 years or something. <laughs> that was rare. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, I was surprised when I saw that. And that much snow, that was, that was rare. I mean, we still have like a huge block of ice um, on the little Greenbelt Trail, and I was surprised to see it. Mm -hmm. All right, so these branches here, this I'm gonna use for an apex. This can be in the back. So I'm just, I wanna get that wired, but I think I'm gonna actually, 
Todd, do you own, do you only wire like lignified like woody branches, or do you ever uh, wire like the the uh, soft like green t like softer growth too? Um, no, I'll wire. Yeah, I'll wire softer growth as well. All right, let's see. I don't necessarily like this line here, so let's see if we can. If we can adjust that some. Maybe actually this comes down here. Here, here, here. Jay, I don't think you're in our Slack, but uh, Brandon was asking earlier, how's your tree doing that you won from Todd last year? Unmute. Uh, it's doing extremely well. Um, it was actually two years ago that I got it and uh, I'm planning on uh, repotting it out of the, its nursery soil. Oh, cool. Uh, this Wait, this spring. I'm sorry. Go repeat that. Is that the shimbaku? Yes, the shimbaku that you uh, you yeah. chopped up. Yeah, my forty dollar raffle tree. Yeah. All right. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what time of year do you uh, suggest on uh, on repotting? Yeah. So when I'm doing when I'm repotting junipers. Um, I usually wait, I wait on junipers until the end, like until like the last, they're, they're usually like the last trees that I repot. Okay, um, so you wait until after you redo the de deciduous trees. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, because with junipers, like too, the, the roots of junipers are not as strong as like pines. And so the foliage is what's really strong. And so I always tend to wait until, until it's a little warmer. And so this is Colorado, right? Um, but it, it applies long until it's a little warmer. And so then the roots are kind of starting to go already. OK. OK. Um, it was in a what I assume to be about a five gallon pot, if you remember that. Yeah. Uh, you're thinking, I'm thinking maybe a third this time around. Sure. Um, uh, 
Yeah, I think actually that's probably a good idea. Okay. Just so, take off take off like the bottom third a little bit and uh, rake it out and then put it in uh, uh, Akadama Pumice APL uh, 211. APL 211, yeah. And so that's like conservative, right? That's the conservative thing to wear. You know, it's like do it in, in two tries. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, I mean, do, I would do with whatever you're, whatever you're comfortable with, you know, if it's, if it's do it in, in two sessions, then, then that's what I would do. All right. Yep. That's what I'm thinking about doing. Yeah. Well, then I'll wait until after my deciduous trees start to bud again, and then, uh, wait for about a week or two and then do the juniper. Yeah, so when do you guys start repotting out there? Uh, pretty soon. Uh, here in San Antonio, I'm in 8B as far as the zone goes. Right. And, and so uh, it starts warming up, you know, about the middle of February. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Jay, we should have locked you in and not let you leave with the tree, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> now that was that was a complete surprise to me, and I was completely happy with it. The tree is doing very well. Um, I've started trying to to pinch it back a little bit for a little bit further development on the pads, and uh, it's 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 held its shape. Uh, I did take the wires off of it before. A winter sat in sure. um, last year. They rewired it again this year, and uh, and so it, it was looking pretty good. Yeah. So with junipers, like let's say with this juniper here, like do you pinch these? I I'm not saying try to pinch. I don't I don't cut really too terribly much. I uh, you know pick and choose and, and pinch strong growth. Uh, to leave the strongest growth, but where I want it to be, that sort of thing. So with junipers like this, like you don't want to pinch this. Uh -huh. You don't want to pinch, like this is just kind of for everyone. I'm actually, I'm glad you brought that up. So with this, um, like here's a good, a good instance. Here. So you can see like as this, this is starting to throw out these really long runners. Mm -hmm. When it starts doing that, that's when I know, okay, I can come in and cut back to like strong, um, like stronger lateral growth, right? Let's, right. Say, let's say this was the pad up to here, right? And then this grew, it's like, okay, I can come in, I can cut back to here like that. Maybe I even want to cut back to here, but I don't ever, right? I don't ever pinch these junipers. It's like you let them you let them grow, and then once they start like elongating like that, that's when you cut come yeah. back in and cut back. That's for Rocky Mountains. That's for one seeds. That's for Utahs. Um, yeah, like the. Berry. Well, I don't ever pinch in the growth area itself. I pinch back to a junction, like yeah. where you were cutting at. Um, so yeah, I guess I I could use a pair of scissors. Yeah, I always cut. So I don't. Yeah. I don't ever pinch. I don't ever okay. pinch. So. Yeah, that's like really bump. I'm glad you brought that up because I I've forgotten to I hadn't mentioned that yet. It's like with these junipers, um, that's not something that, that you want to pinch. You know, and it's like that's for years, right? That's what we were taught. It's like, oh, you pinch juniper, you pinch them, you pinch them. And then one time, like I was asking, I was talking to Ryan, it's like, no, you, you never pinch junipers. It's like, well, that's what, that's what everyone does. It's like, but you have, have you ever seen a well ramified one? And I was like, no, I never have. And he's like, well, there you go. There you go. And so like after that, it's like, oh, all right. Okay, well, thank you. I'm going to mute myself again. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for jumping in there, Jay. Yeah. 
All right, so if we're looking here, and this is the front. And that's really wide. So here, so now I'm just going to adjust a little here. Here. Like I'm just trying to find room for everything. So here we're gonna wire this next, and this will actually this branch here will probably be the longest, the longest part on the tree, off to this side. Let's start. This is out. This feels out a little far. So let's let's push that in. Uh oh, what did you do? Actually, I like the sound of sirens for whatever reason. Well, Todd's doing that. Um... I was just notified we still have four spots open for the workshop that's coming up on this Saturday. Um, and, and for the question on um, beginner advice and so on, highly advise you take the workshop, you get a tree out of it. Um, Brandon's, we're going to be doing it virtually. And so uh, Roland and I will be running around. I'll be running around on Thursday, dropping off trees. Roland's doing it uh, Friday. And dropping off trees. So if you sign up, you get a tree out of it and some good instruction from Brandon at a Hawkeye bonsai. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm pretty excited. Uh, Ruin, he's a uh, his main job is filmmaking, and so he'll be there with all his fancy equipment. Um, I'll be trying to poke in my equipment there, here and there, so we'll have nice detailed shots for you guys and so on. Yeah, that's, that's a great idea. Now, I'm sorry, I couldn't, we couldn't figure that out to where. Well, we have more workshops to fill. We're still working on our schedule since we're trying something new this year. No, I mean, uh, like doing a demo down there. Yeah, I know. I wish. It's just, it's one of those things where it's like Austin went into a stage five and they're talking yeah. about, yeah, opening up um, the convention center for ho more hospital bed space and so on. So it's just, yeah. it's one of those like, if it was up to me and only me kind of deal, but it's like, if I make that decision and sure. get somebody sick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, no, and that's like one of the things like I have to think about because after I go to Houston, I'm going to I'm going to Kansas City and the person I work for is like she's older and I don't know. So that's I, I, I talked to her and she wants me to come, but it's like stuff like that scares me too. You know, it's like she's the sweetest lady, but and it's like I like working Therefore, but I, I worry about that as well. So yeah, it's hard. Even during the holidays, my in-laws wanted to come over um, for dinner, and we're just like, 
Well, we have to set everything far apart and be as responsible as, pos as possible because you are the, the target age for this virus. <laughs> And then it's like dodging her when she's coming at you to hug you. And you're like, no, no, I love you, but. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That tree is looking pretty spectacular. No, it's pretty neat. Yeah. All right, so we'll do this. I will. Like, there's still some of the back. I'm, I'll finish all this and it. Like I'll, I'll go as long as you guys want, but I don't know, what time is it? Oh, yeah, we're at 9.23. Yeah. Um, you keep going, I can, I can um, kick off the raffle. So I'll give people maybe yeah. about another five minutes to add to the raffle. Um, just remember the raffles to help bring you guys good content. Um, we as a board have been racking our brains on how to provide better content for you guys with us having this virtual format. And so we're working on that um, and adding additional um, membership benefits, you would say. It's, it's really hard just not meeting in place, but we're trying to replace that by offering um, as much as we can for being a member and keeping us going strong. Here, wait, is Sally still there? Did you have a Ponderosa? No, I have um, black pines. I did have, uh, before I knew what I was doing, I brought a white pine down that I bought in Corvallis up in Oregon. I'm from Oregon and I brought it down um, it made it four and a half years. Uh -huh. All right. I, just but, I remember last year we were talking, or yeah, last year, January, when, or whenever it was, that I was down there and there was someone there that had a Ponderosa. But then it had passed away. And it's like, I wonder if that was so. Uh, I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember. So. All right, let's go back up here. All right, let's let's start and figure this out. All right.
I would, okay, so we have um, more questions here. Would you consider adding root graphs to this tree right where the fin starts? Right in here. Is that where they're at? Uh, Brandon said yes. Right here. I thought about that. Um, and it's like, okay, if you root graph this and you put a root graph in here, like here's the biggest point, but then you lose a lot. So it's like, I thought about that. Like, do you put a root graph here? Do you put a root graph there? Um, yeah. Yeah, I have, I, I have. You just gotta, yeah, you just have to be careful, right? Because that live vein is pretty small. And two, like there's a root here that comes up into here that comes down and then twists in the back. in the back, but there's no foliage. So you're all right with this one. So then you would just have to root graft this, this one here. So this is the root that's feeding everything. This that comes right here onto there, this is, this is the live portion of the whole tree, just right there. Yeah, Brandon mentioned uh, multiple live veins to tap in, into makes it more challenging. Yeah, yeah, because then you have to get all of them. So, so on this, you have one live vein, but it's not very big. So actually this, let's take right there. Okay, so I'll start the raffle now. Yeah. Um, so we have two people. Who did it? So it's 10. I'm going to put that in my number generator and let me just switch. So you guys know I'm not cheating. Come on, Lawrence. <laughs> Can everybody see the number generator? I can. Yeah, it looks good, Summer. You can? Okay. And it's three. So three is David Flynn. So David, you can pick what you want. And then the second person, which would be Lawrence, would pick the other thing. <laughs> Yay. I'll take the uh, junipers. Cool. Oh, great. I wanted the toothpick. Great. <laughs> <laughs> the dental pick. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. We appreciate it. Thanks.
So there's a big empty space in there, right? You see this? So let's see if we can cover some of that up. Maybe that helps. Or it's like put some foliage, little foliage in there. All right. All right. So all this is done, and we just have the back. Do you want me to keep going? Um. Everyone, type one if you want him to continue going. Right, or... Good. If they're ready to go. Of course, Lawrence puts in three. Uh, there's a bunch of ones, so it looks like most are willing to. All right. So here, keep going. I was looking at this. It should maybe be maybe 15 more minutes, and that's it. All right, that works for us. And then after you finalize it, like um, you're gonna send us a picture. I'll, post I'll post it after the morning. Okay, cool. Yeah, so on the back here, I'm just, I want to keep this short, right? Because we don't need, we don't need a lot of length in the back. We just need this to stop our eye. There's some, this piece of dead wood is that helping. I think it probably is. So here, let's just.
So back here too, So we're here. This is where we're at right now. There's some junctions of threes. And so when you have that, you don't always remove the middle one. Because sometimes there's a branch next to it that needs, needs that space. Or maybe the middle is the stronger and you need stronger. So I'm just looking here trying to figure out. So actually here, the best and most ramified piece is that center piece. So I'm gonna take out that side piece and then I can wire, wire this back piece. And then too, when I'm doing this, I'm looking to see like, where's the orientation? Because right now this branch here, it's, it's like this. It's on the side. And so I need to bring it, bring it this way. So, and if you left it upside down or whatever, you know, it's like the branch, the branch won't necessarily die, but it won't recover. You know, it just makes sense. It won't recover as quickly. Yeah, and so sometimes, sometimes with this, like you can use the wire to adjust it if it's upside down. Sometimes you can't because the wire is going in the opposite direction that the opposite direction that you want the branch to go. So then you have to use your fingers. So like, let's say it's, it's like this, like maybe with your fingers and your wire, you want it to go this way, but the wire is going this way, then you have to rotate with your hands, hold it there, and then, then put your piece of wire on. So it's like you have to be dexterous, very dexterous. So here's one of those instances where I'm, with my left hand, I'm holding the branch, the orientation correct, and then I have to wire, run the wire um, while I'm holding it in the correct orientation. Yeah, what do we do with this little guy? He's kind of a nomad. All right. So I'm gonna take this off. But when you're looking at the front, there's nothing there. So what I'm gonna actually do is I'll take some of this 
some of these branches. We'll look at it from the front, but I can take these and scoot this over into this area just so you get a little bit of foliage coming in from that side. All right, so this branch here, I'm able to use the wire, but this is upside down. So I'm just gonna rotate there, rotate there, use the wire, and then this should be... So one thing with one seed junipers versus like Rocky Mountains and stuff like that, it's like you have to be Careful with the foliage because sometimes it'll break off, right? And so why is that? Anyone? Clumsy? That could be part at times, but no. So one C juniper versus in here, I'll show you. Cause I happen to have a Rocky Mountain juniper in here. But here's one seed foliage, right? And then here's Rocky Mountain foliage. See how fine it is compared to one seeds? So when you're hitting a one seed with the foliage, there's so much more like friction and torque on it that, that sometimes that you knock it off. I've noticed that like too with California junipers that have that really bulky foliage. Um, Utah junipers that have very large foliage, um, even like Sierras, because the Sierra foliage is, is a lot thicker than Rocky Mountain. So that's just something, I don't know, it's something to be aware of if you're working with, with a one seed or a Utah or, you know, a California juniper is that you have to be careful with the foliage because it can, it can break off because it's so much thicker. Joey mentioned ash juniper is fine. Does it knock off quite as easily? Correct. Who's Josh? Oh, oh you're... Joey. Oh, Joey. Yeah. No, that's true. That's true. And I, I've noticed that as well, that the, yeah, that foliage is not, it's not as thick as this, as one seeds. It's a little finer. Yeah.
All right, we're almost done. I got this, and then there's this little branch right above it. So. Hey Todd, what's the uh, what's the workshop at Hurley's? Um, what what are you covering there? Uh, I don't know. Oh okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what exactly what exactly he has planned for me. So he's doing a demo on an Ash Juniper. Yeah. Oh, a demo Ash Juniper. Okay. Cool. Thanks, Lawrence. I oh, know. I wish I could go, but I got to work. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm, I'm excited to go down there. I mean, so this, like, to be honest, this is part of, like, as I was sitting and trying to figure out, like, how, like, what is a, like, a bonsai business model in Colorado look like, you know, because it gets so cold and we have, you know, periods of where there is a not, <clears throat> there's not a lot of, things you can do um, just because it's so cold. And so, I don't know, it's like that's, so one of the things is like, well, you, you go to Texas, you know, or it's like you go to Las Vegas and you go, you know, you go south where, where you can still, where people are still working on things, so. I don't know. So like stuff like this at this time of year, it's like, I, like I'm grateful too to, to you guys for having me because this is, you know, it's like, I don't know. Because it's interesting in Colorado trying to do bonsai for, for a living and it's manageable and it's fine. But it's just one of those things where it's like, well, what is this? What does this look like, you know? Because a lot of people, like a lot of people in Colorado that were in the club when I told them what I was gonna do, they're like, oh, you can, you can make, never make a living at Bonsai in Colorado, you know? And so it's like, That's crazy, man. Because seeing all those trees in your backyard, I was like, "Wow, that's." I I don't I I can't understand how someone would say that. Y'all got so much like beautiful uh, species over there to play yeah. with. Yeah. No, thanks. And places to collect from. Yeah, but I I don't think they were talking about. I don't. Know. It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter, but it, it was actually good because it was one of those things where it was like, all right, well, well, I'll show you, you know, but too, like the first year I did this, I didn't know what the winter would be like. And so my, at the time, like my sister's boyfriend ran a calendar shop in the mall for Christmas, right? You buy calendars. And he sold a lot of calendars. He's like, hey, if you ever need work, you know, you can come here and, and work for me for next to nothing, but that's what he paid, you know? And it was like, oh, all right. And so I was prepared to do that, like that first year, because I didn't know like, would there be work? How much work was I going to get, you know, and, and stuff like that. So it was, I don't know. Yeah, to think, I was just, I was thinking ahead and I was prepared. But it worked out just fine, so. All right, I have two. I think two wires left.
then we'll be done here. And Brandon mentioned this is your third year presenting for us. So thank you very much for yeah, um, no, taking the time yeah. to do a demo. Yeah, no, it's great. This is my third year, yeah, with you guys. And then, yeah, third year. So 2017, 18. So this is my fifth year also doing this. We're going into the fifth year doing this as a, as a business, so. Oh, Joey said um, he got your Yupon Holly um, the first year you presented. Oh, yeah. It's still in his yard. Oh, good. Good. One, yeah. Maybe just one more wire. Oh, correction there. It belongs to Allison. He's caretaking it. I think you're kind of freaking everybody out on uh, sticking the scissors in your pocket. They're going to start a hashtag scissor pocket or pocket scissors. Why? Um, I think the first comment was uh, Joey had mentioned that he would have stabbed himself so many times if he put his scissors in his pocket. Yeah. <laughs> Thank uh, you, but you've been doing really well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but like my scissors, so too, my scissors. Like I'm, I'm using it to cut wire. Um, I'm using it, like I'll cut some like thicker branches. This isn't like my shears. If I was gonna do like black pine work or something like that, where you're cutting shoots. Um, but yeah, I just like, I'll cut up to 10 gauge wire with these. All right, one more piece of wire and then we're good here. Yeah, thanks for everyone for sticking around. Here, let's look at this and then. Let's see. All right, so let's 
Yeah. Uh, where are we? Yep. So we're right here. Uh, all right, so this is the front, right? Right here. All right, I think that's good. That's good. This, this, this. There's still. It's like, I just want to tighten that up a little, a little more. Let's drop that down. This is here. Yeah, this is even, let's do this. I'm gonna break this. Because it was kind of fighting with this little thing right here. So we're here, we're here. All right, so let's call that for now. Maybe that goes down, we can make a little pad out of this. So this is, what, is what's gonna happen tomorrow when I'm in here before I, like you photograph it. This is one thing too that's really good about photographing is that Like you can see where mistakes are and where, you know, where you need to improve on things. So. There, but maybe that's a little better. So before I send it all, we'll photograph it. And we'll see. All right, let's be. There. All right, so two, this side is short. This is short over here. But that's what we want to do, you know? And so like I was intentionally pulling this this way just to kind of counter some of the weakness in the base. Um, and so two, you know, we can see it's like maybe like this apex is right here. It's a little thin, but as this grows, right? Because this will really take off. It's like maybe, maybe we bring this up and over too, you know, and really like start pushing all that that way. So, um, I don't know, for a first, for first design on this, I'm, I'm, this is pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. This was not an easy tree. It was an easy tree because it's like cascading and then it's like having to, you know, because if we just brought this down on top of this, then it's like everything's going to be crushed. So you kind of have to like breathe and try to figure out and like some of these really long branches. Um, I don't know, just trying to figure out what that looks like. So it'll be interesting to see. So I won't let this freeze. Um, 
I won't let it freeze for this year. And then I will probably also let this sit. If I hadn't wired this, I was gonna repot it this year into like a bonsai pot. But since I did this work now, I'll probably let it sit for another year. And then next year I'll repot it, so. Any other? Are you gonna, or were you fertilizing it beforehand or? Um... Yeah, so last year I had, I put a new application of fertilizer on probably once a month. And so I'd put like 12, 12 pieces in four locations. Right, so if you have a, a rectangle, you know, or here, we'll even say this. So here's the bottom. So let's say it's around, right? I'd put one, you know, at 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock. And then the next month it was at, you know, two o'clock, five o'clock, seven o'clock and 11 o'clock. So I just kept rotating it like that, but I'd have 12 pieces on there at a time, so. Cool beans. All right. Any other questions? that anybody has, feel free to jump in. Looks awesome, Todd, I love it. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, thanks. I'm gonna, yeah, I'll take a picture of it tomorrow. And um, yeah, I'll send it to you in the morning. Wow, thank you. Yep. Uh, thank you so much for being with us tonight, man. We yeah, well, for love having you. Yep. It looks great, thanks. All right. yeah. Yeah, thank you. So uh, have, yeah, man, have, have happy travels. Be safe. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you, thank Todd. You. Thank you. We're the COVID thank you. cauldron of Texas. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you later. Bye, Todd. All right. All right. Everyone, that concludes our January meeting. Thank you all for... Um, participating and uh we'll see you next month let me and summer know if y'all need anything or just whatever all right y'all have a good night thanks yeah good night Bye. thanks guys Bye. all right All right. Looks like cool. it's, can you hear me? Okay, cool. There you are. Awesome. Yeah. Summer, thanks so much for being the moderator and just, yeah, you, you kicked ass. Thank you. No problem. You want to stop the recording? Oh, yes. That'd be a good idea. Uh, <laughs> I was like, don't say secrets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Do I...